everyone! Today, we will talk about abalone, specifically the ones found on California's shores. There are eight abalone species in California. The most reliable way to tell them apart is to look at the epipodium, which is a part of the mollusk's body projecting beyond the shell edge. However, abalones you would see on the beach are just shells. This means that you have to rely on the shape and color of the shell to recognize the species. The amount of respiratory pores, the row of holes located at the edge of the shell, can also be helpful. These pores are used to extrude the water that has already passed through the gills of the animal. The water may also contain waste and reproductive cells. The shell of a black abalone can have up to nine holes, whereas the red abalone may have as little as three to four holes. By the way, gathering live abalone is very restricted and highly regulated in California. As for the shells, except where it is prohibited within the protected conservation areas, including state parks, collecting empty shells is allowed, but you can't sell them or make them into any commercial products. So, before you take any shell home, check the status of the land and remember, regulations may change any time. The name of the species originates from the Spanish word aulón or aulone, which means water spout. The top of the shell does have a swirly pattern, but it's often obscured by the overgrowth of barnacles or algae. The scientific name of the genus is Haliotis, and it refers to the ear-like shape of the shell. Greek name Otis means the one who can hear well. In addition to a common name, ear shell, abalones are called mutton shell in Australia due to association with sheep meat, pawa in New Zealand, and ormer in Britain. Human usage of abalone has a long history in California. Local Native American tribes gathered abalone not only for food, they also made fishing hooks, jewelry, tools, small containers, and even money from the beautifully iridescent mother-of-pearl shell interior of the abalone. Ancient people who lived on the coast often created large piles of seashells near their villages, which helped scientists to find archaeological sites. In more recent times, abalone meat was canned in large quantities. The canning of abalone temporarily replaced the whale hunting activities until the supplies were exhausted. Nowadays, the black and white abalone are considered to be endangered species, and only the red abalone can be taken in small quantities from isolated areas, mostly north of San Francisco. Each animal should be appropriately tagged. The red abalone is the largest species, and it can grow up to 12.3 inches, or approximately 31 centimeters. Abalone meat is considered to be a delicacy by many, and it commands high prices. This led to overhunting and decrease in population. The situation became even worse due to a disease called abalone wasting disease, a bacterial infection causing the abalone to starve to death. Therefore, abalone farming became an attractive alternative. The first attempts to farm abalone began when Daniel Morse found a way to induce abalone spawning. In 1977, he and his colleagues wrote an article in the Science Journal describing experiments demonstrating the induction of abalone spawning in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. However, this was not enough. The next problem that had to be solved was the attachment of the larva to the substrate. And Dr. Moore solved this one too by adding a chemical called GABA to the water with the larva. And so the history of abalone farming began. Most of the abalone meat on the market, especially in Asia, is produced by abalone farms. Hunting wild abalone is banned in California until 2021. The most popular ways to prepare abalone is to saute, fry, or cook with eggs. You can also buy dried abalone in Chinatown of San Francisco. Now, let's take a look at the anatomy of the animal. The body is coiled around the huge muscle attached to the center of the shell. You can see the scar where the mother of pearl has a rough surface. 
If you flip the shell over, the side with the holes will be the left one. The head of the mollusk is right under the most recently formed hole, which is the closest to the edge. The waste is removed from the oldest open hole, which is next to the one that was recently sealed. The heart is located in probably the most protected area, right under the apex of the shell. Abalones have colorless blood, which does not coagulate well. An injured abalone may bleed to death. The divers use a special tool that looks like a flattened metal spoon to detach the mollusk from the rock without damaging the animal. This has to be done when unsuspecting abalone has its shell slightly elevated above the rock. When the abalone is disturbed, it pulls its shell very close to the rock, making it almost impossible to remove. Before you take an abalone shell home, make sure you know how to clean it up because lots of tiny animals and algae live on the shell. If taken out of the water, they will die and smell terribly. Abalones sometimes make pearls, though it is quite rare. The pearl is usually on the inner shell, and it looks kind of lumpy, not the near-perfect sphere that oysters make. Abalones are also marine gastropod mollusks. That means they are technically snails. The baby abalones eat diatoms and microalgae. They switch to macroalgae like bull kelp, Turkish towel, dulse, and laminaria when they become adults. Abalones are nocturnal and, in addition to humans, they have many other predators, which include sea otters, octopus, crabs, lobsters, starfish, predatory snails, and fish. For instance, cabazons and bat rays. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about abalones. See you!